and he brought them out and said, Sons, what must I do to be saved? I want you to keep note of the words of the jailer. He uses two strong ones. Number one, must. Number two, save. When the word must is used, it simply means the most important and the only requirement. No plan B, no option B, because he's asking them, Sons, what must I? What must I? Is there anything that I must do so that I can go to heaven? Is there anything that I must do so that I can see the kingdom of God? Is there anything that I must do so that I don't go to hell? The word saved. He says, what must I do to be saved? The word saved simply means being delivered from the powers of eternal damnation, never going to hell again. You know, when we are doing our soul winning, sometimes when we ask people what they understand by the word saved, people will give you different definitions. Others will tell you to be saved is to dress well. To be saved is to stop smoking. To be saved is to be a good person. To be saved is to pray every day. But brothers and sisters, even without referring to the scriptures, the word saved comes from the word saved. It's an action. And only a powerful personality, a powerful subject, a powerful power can save you where you are helpless. Say for example, if I was in my house, and my house was on fire, at that point in time, I cannot deliver myself. I am in risk of dying. What will happen unto me? I'll begin screaming, calling for help. And whoever will come and secure me out of that trouble will be called my savior with regards to that situation. This man is asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? What is the requirement? The must requirement that I'm supposed to do so that I never go to hell. So if you are hearing me right, this is the point. This is a man who is asking a question to Paul and Silas because he does not want to go to hell because of his sins. Number one, in that question, he realizes that he's in danger of going to hell. You know when you begin to ask someone, what must I do to, to be saved? What must I do to go to heaven? It begins from you being informed that, hey, you are in danger. The probability, the chances of you going to hell are high. Any sin that you have ever committed in your life is enough to take you to hell. It's not about a big sin. It's not about a small sin. No. Any sin that you've ever committed in your life and you are still in that condition, you have not come to a point of asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? You have not come to a point of agreeing to speak to our soul winners, agreeing to speak to Pastor Paul, agreeing to look out for the truth. That sin is just enough to take Good morning. We are talking to Pastor Paul of a church known as Faithful Lord Christ Baptist Church, just behind here. So, the reason why uh, we did knock this door was just to have a, a very brief conversation with you and in the interest of understanding if you are a Christian or not. Are you, are you a Christian? You go to church. Which one? KG Feather. Oh nice, I know it. So you being a Christian, do you believe all Christians will go to heaven? Yes, I do. Asan, do you want us to get in? We are just fine here. Oh yeah. So do you believe all Christians will go to heaven? Okay. So for you Christians are those who go to KAG, Catholic, or who? Who are, who are specifically Christians for you? My definition of Christian is yes. someone who follows what the Bible says. So when you talk of following what the, the Bible says, are you talking of the commandments or the, the things of the Bible? Alright. So you, be, you having the faith that you are a Christian and having gone to church for all this time, are you a hundred percent for sure that if you are to die today, God forbid, you will go to heaven? You're not a hundred percent sure. So, uh, what do you believe one has? Okay, I understand you said someone who follows the Bible teachings. So, is it that you are not following all of them? 
If that means I'm not following all of them. You are not following all of them. Okay, fine. So that's the reason why I came to your door. And the reason the reason is going to heaven is very easy. Very easy. In fact, God God does not want you to struggle, to work hard, to try to, to become another person to go to heaven. Going to heaven is very easy. And if you are to give me some few minutes, I'll prove you from the scriptures and leave you with an answer and understanding that if you want to go to heaven when you die, you can go. And if you don't want, then again, it's your choice. So, number one, truthfully speaking, even I that is speaking unto you being a pastor, I don't keep everything that the Bible says. It is so hard. And I believe if we were to say, doing all that the Bible says, then we are saying, keeping the commandments. Because the Bible is a book of do this, don't do this. But I want to prove unto you to the fact that no one ever kept the commandment uh, perfectly. In fact, starting with Moses, Moses broke them. When he was given, he threw them down, right? But also, the Bible proves the fact that if you can move closer so, so you can just see what I'm reading, the Bible proves the fact that uh, in the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 16, the Bible says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So the Bible says by keeping the law, by trying to keep the commandments, God can never justify anyone. And Paul is saying here, he knows being a believer and the rest of the believers who have the same faith like him, that only having the faith of Jesus Christ is what takes you to heaven. It's not about doing the whole teachings because no one ever does them perfectly, right? And then if you consider again, he, he proves the fact that anyone, uh, anyone who believes that he has to keep the commandments to go to heaven, such a person will simply be saying the death of Jesus Christ has no impact on him or her. Because there are two roads to go to heaven. The roads of keeping the commandments and the road of trusting in Jesus Christ. You can never use two roads to reach a, a destination. So even on matters going to heaven, you are either going to say, hey, I want to try to keep all the commandments in the Bible to go to heaven, which the Bible says it's a dead end. But also we have the road of having faith in Christ Jesus alone. No plus, no minus. And so the Bible says what in verses 20? Um, verses 20 it says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So to just do this, the reason why we have to trust in him, he gave himself for us. That means he died on the cross for our sins. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says, verses 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, keep note of this, then Christ is dead in vain. Father, brother, the Bible proves the fact that those who trust in the commandments to go to heaven are under a curse. In the eyes of God, God is seeing people who are cursed. Because the Bible says here, chapter 3, verses 10, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Why? For it is written, Cast is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So the, here, here, here is where there is a problem. They want to keep the law to go to heaven, but they are breaking the same law. Because the requirement of God is that if you are for the law, keep it 100% perfect without breaking a dot. So that's why God is calling them a cast, right? Then he says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Which faith? The faith of Christ Jesus. Then he said, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of, of uh, from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, "Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree." Once you come to a realization of knowing that Jesus Christ took that curse from you, there's no business you keeping the law again to go to heaven. Remember, I'm not standing here to tell you, to tell you that I hate the law. That's not my 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 point, and I don't want you to look at me in that perspective. I'm trying to show you that the law cannot take you to heaven. The law in itself has its role. And I'm going to show you what the work of the law is. Verses 21. 
it says is the law then against the promises of God God forbid for if the if there had been a, a law given which could have given life very righteousness should have been by the law but the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that do would believe but before faith came we were kept under the law shut up into the faith which should afterwards be revealed this is the point now verses 24 wherefore the word wherefore means because of this the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith so what was the work of the law it was our a training teacher to bring us unto Christ how before the law came that said thou shalt not steal you could not tell if you are a, a, a thief before the law came that says thou shalt not covet you will need know that you are a covetous person but when the law came it really proved the fact that you are a, a you are a sinner and now being a sinner you need a savior so the law is there to move you unto christ to show you that hey you can't be perfect if god wanted you to be perfect on your own it was going to be impossible now you need a savior who is jesus christ so that was the work of the law the law of god is holy the law of god is good but the law not, does not save anyone to go to heaven and moses is very clear telling the 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 the, the, the jews who are given the law of the same telling them that hey the law cannot save you it says here unto the jews be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins and by him all that believe are justified from all things mark this from which you could not be justified by the law of moses so when we speak about the law sometimes people think of the law of moses alone but for those who have gone to church like you and me understand that the whole bible is the law now i come back to the now main point if the law cannot take me to heaven if even if i try to do the law cannot take, cannot save me then the question would be what must i do then to go to heaven right so that is now the main point that i want to close with but my goal is one that once you have understood this you will have an option of doing what the bible says so that you are a hundred percent sure that when you die you will go to heaven there's there's, there's, there's nothing bad to call yourself a christian but still you are not sure that you are going to heaven when you die and the reason why people are found in that uh, category or in that group is because no one has taught them the, the clarity of the scriptures concerning matters going to heaven and people are just religious for the fact that they don't go into a mosque now they call themselves a christian but i believe that whoever calls himself or herself a christian has to be a hundred percent sure without doubt that when i die i'm going to heaven my position in heaven has been secured not because i kept the law not because i was a good person not because i changed my behavior but because i did one thing that is very easy and this thing is here act 16 this is the story of paul and silas in jail the soldier who was guarding paul and silas comes to a point of asking paul and silas a very crucial question showing that he's also desperate he wants to know what gonna i do so that i go to heaven and the bible says here when he saw that the prisoners were free he was almost going to kill himself that is committing suicide right and then the bible says verse 28 but paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here then he the policeman called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before paul and silas and brought them out and said sirs keep note of this question sirs what must i do to be saved what is this thing that i have to do i must it's not optional i must think that i have to do so that i go to heaven and this is the answer and they said believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house so did they tell this guy to do everything in the bible believe. only believe isn't it do you know what john 3 16 says mm. do you remember mm. it says what for god to love the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only video return yes that whosoever believes in him, believes in him should not perish huh? yes yeah. should not perish to perish is to go to hell isn't it should not perish but have what everlasting life so is there any possibility that after you've believed on jesus christ you can go to hell do you think so you cannot because he says this that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life then he says verse 18 he that believeth on him is not condemned that means once you believe on jesus christ by faith 
God will never take you to hell, no matter what. Okay? Then he says, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. What is to believe in Jesus Christ? Do you have any understanding when the Bible says you have to believe in Jesus Christ, and once you believe in him, you'll never go to hell? What do you understand when the Bible says believe in? Wow. Mm. Hey. Yes, complex. The complex, eh? But let me let me just help you out. The word believe means to trust. Okay? Yes, trust. To have faith in a person or in something 100%. So what the Bible is telling us, me and you here, is that once you have faith in Jesus Christ for what he did on the cross, because of you, you should not again be looking on other ways of trying to find your way to heaven. That, you know, when you have faith in Jesus Christ, you are simply saying, whatever Jesus Christ did on the cross was enough for me to go to heaven. I don't need to struggle away again my way to heaven. Because the Bible says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for, for us. So Christ died for you, Christ died for me. And that is why, you know, for me, I have this, I have this God confident that when I die, I'll go to heaven. Is it based on my good works? No. Is it based on me keeping the commandments? No. It is based on what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He never sinned, the Bible says. He was a righteous man. The Bible says he was tempted in all point of his life, but he never sinned. But yet, he took the punishment of a sinner, who is me and you. So at the end of the day, if we go doubting what he did on the cross, that is when we will find ourselves in the trouble of, I have to keep the commandments to go to heaven. I have to be a good person to go to heaven. And then it gets us back to Galatians 2, 21, when Paul says, if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead, is dead in vain. That means we will be saying, Jesus died, yes, but he did not die for us. Because those who believe that Jesus died for them, they believe one thing, he paid everything completely on the cross. Do you understand, brother? So, if I was to ask you, do you think going to church can take you to heaven? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> do you think keeping the commandments can take you to heaven? Okay, I have a question based on that. Huh? Yes. I think, uh, yeah, please ask. Now that uh, we are still alive, yes. we still have to bind by the commandments. Perfectly. I agree with you. But if we have to abide with the commandments, are we abiding with the commandments with the goal of going to heaven or with the goal of what? Because at the end of the day, think about this. If the Bible is saying believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll have everlasting life and you'll never go to hell. And then another preacher comes and says, hey, abide with the commandments so that you go to heaven. Will he be saying the truth? Now, like I showed you before, the commandments have its work to show you the Savior. Number two, number two. After you have believed on Christ Jesus Christ, that is not a guarantee that you are going to be a perfect person. Why? Because of this. I'm, I'm answering your question, okay? Because Proverbs shows, shows us that no matter what, as long as we are living in this flesh, we will sin, even after we are saved. Because what gets saved? It is the soul. Because it's the soul that has to go to hell or to go to heaven. This body is full of sin. That's why it would remain in the grave and go and experience corruption. And so the Bible says what in Proverbs 24, 9, to prove unto the fact that I'll be a, a lying preacher if I'll tell you that now that you have believed on Christ Jesus, never commit sin. That will be a lie. The Bible says, Proverbs 24, verses 9, the Bible says, the thought of foolishness is sin. sin. Do you think this will not happen with those who have believed in Christ Jesus? it will happen. That's why Paul comes to a point and says, hey, when he wants to do that which is right, pleasing unto God, in the will of God, he finds himself doing the opposite. Then he cries out saying, oh wretched man, who shall deliver me from this body? Then he says, if I do sin, it is not me sinning, but the sin that liveth in my flesh. So according to the motivation of a believer, having been born of God, because the new man is now in him, he's not He's not out to go sinning. It is not his goal to go sinning. But because he's still living on this planet Earth and moving around in the body that is full of sin, this person, whether he likes it or not, I'm not saying that he's going to sin willfully, but will find himself at the end of the day, he has lied, he has committed uh, some sins that God will not love, and I'll show you that after he does that, there's something that God will do unto him, but will never take him to hell. But before we come to that point, I believe that if you are not a father of 
children you have parents isn't it so let me use the analogy of you and your parents you have a mom isn't it okay how many times did your mom give birth to you how many times were you born it's in that only, family? It's only, one time. it's only one time, isn't it? it? It looks like a stupid question, but it's heading somewhere to help us understand something. The reason I ask that question is because I want you to also see that when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, you get born again, not born again, born again, born again, born again. It's a one, it's a one, so it's a one time, uh -huh. okay? Because John, John chapter 1, I'm doing this but also going to answer your question so that I can show you what happens to those who go sinning not abiding the commandment of God after they are, they are saved. So the Bible says in John chapter 1 verses 12, but as many as received him, this is Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, mark this, even to them that believe on his name. So you believe on Jesus, you are given power to be called the son of God. That's when, that's when now you can know that now I am born again. Because I've believed on Jesus, not keeping the commandments, not doing everything the Bible says because we fail every day. But now I've believed in Jesus, therefore now God has given me power to be called his son, therefore I'm born again. Now the truth is that after you are born again, you remain born again forever. Do you know what that means? Once you are saved, you remain saved forever. Now let's talk about backslide. I'm coming there. I'm coming there. I'm so glad that you are bringing up this, but I'm coming there. Now, look here. Let me use the, the analogy of your parents again. So now you are born once in your family, isn't it? Okay. I assume you are going 30 or plus, isn't it? Ever since you are born day one, up to, up to where you are, did you ever sin against your parents? Sin. Yes, did you ever make, okay, let me not use the word sin. Did you ever disobey your parents? Uh, yes. Okay. So, when you disobeyed, did they ever come to a point of disowning you? Did they ever come to a point of saying that now you are too much? We don't think you'll continue to be a member of this family? So what if your mother would have come to a point and said, from today, my son, I don't regard you as my son. Your membership in this family has stopped. Will that change anything? Will, 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 no, no, it, won't change anything. it won't change anything, isn't it? That's why we see some insane people on the streets. And sometimes we don't think about them, but the truth is that they have a family they belong to. Even if their family will go silent on them, we know and they know that they belong to that family. That is the same with God. After a person has believed, he or she becomes a child of God. But then this is the truth. Either way, he or she is going to be a disobedient child of God because of just willingly breaking the commandments of God and that's now when backsliding comes in. Or either is going to be this person who says, I'm a child of God, I am saved, I'm going to end by faith alone, but I want to keep the commandments of God. Now this is the question, when you disobeyed your parents, what did they do? Punishment first. Punishment first, in a form of what? Just rebuke or chastisement, or both. For my, my, in my case, there was this time of re being rebuked severally, and when I persist on, then this one comes in. For you it was this one. No matter the, the mistake, whether big or small, all right, the same applies to God. And God wants us to use that analogy to understand that after we are saved and we are called his children, we remain 100%, his children will never go to hell. But if we go sinning, if we go backslidden, he will beat us again. But he will never take us to hell. I'm going to prove to you that in the scriptures. Look here. So chapter 12 is all about a believer struggling with sin. Over truth, believers are also struggling against sin. There are those who are struggling with adultery. There are those who are struggling with coveting women. There are those who are struggling with coveting money and all that. And you know, we all find ourselves in this trouble. And if you consider chapter 12, Paul is asking believers to run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus Christ, knowing that they are being looked at by the cloud of witnesses, and that they should come to a point of even undoing that sin that is always putting them down to be called backslidden Christians. But then he comes to a point of saying that if we commit sin 
God will chastise us. The Bible says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. To, chast to chastise is to beat. Then he says, And scourge every son. Keep note of that. Every son whom he receiveth. So how did you become a son? By believing on Jesus Christ. And therefore, that, that's when you became a son. And therefore, God received you. And when he received you, you better know that there is now a system of punishment. To show that he loves you, when you sin, he punishes you. And then he says, if you endure chastening, God delayed with you as with sons. Then the question is here, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? So God is bringing to a point of saying that if your dad in your biological father or your garden punished you, God also does the same unto those who are called his children. And so he says, verses 8, But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. What do you understand by the word bastards? B B bastard. Yeah. See, we always uh, use it. Maybe it can be. <laughs> Yeah, you are right. But the word bastard used, if I can just use the simplest example, is like, you know, for me, I cannot punish, punish the children of my neighbor because they are not my real children. I, can, I have the right to punish my own children. So what God is saying here is that if you claim that you are saved... You also have a right to question your neighbor's children. I, I have a right, but at the end of the day, logically speaking, things can turn against me. Right? Yeah. So, but what the Bible is telling us here is that if you claim that you are saved, and then when you go willingly sinning against God, nothing is happening unto you in terms of chastisement, then that is a proof that you never believed. Because it's, it's proving the fact that those who called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation by faith, anytime they go sinning willfully, God is there with the rod. How? Can frustrate them, can, can make them lack peace at work, can make them lame, blind, can cause them to go through an accident, can even kill them. If you think about it, David is in heaven today. But David, having been a man after God's own heart, the way the Bible says that there's no man that sinneth not, David sinned against God. He committed adultery, he committed murder. But what is the punishment? The punishment, he faced the punishment on earth here by even God making Absalom to go on bed with his concubines and, you know, causing David to lack no peace. What about King Saul? He's in heaven today. But the Bible says because of the two transgressions that he committed, God killed him by causing him to even fall on his own sword and he's in heaven today. So, so the, the common slogan that Malipo ni hapa hapa ni true. Yeah, Malipo ni hapa hapa hivi, if God is now dealing with us, because look, if you, like for example for me, isn't it, if I chose to go out to rob a bank with three guys who are not saved, it should not even surprise you that those that are unsaved may escape, but for me, God will, might do things that will cause people, the mob justice just to find me and kill me on the spot, because now God will be using that as a way of chastising me. So if people whom God chastises and says, you're gonna not live again in the world for long, come back home. And we have many examples. But so at the end of the day, you find that going to heaven is very easy, isn't it? Bible Bilia. Yes. It may say that in the human life, um, Mungu was 70 years. Yes. And past 70 is supposed to be blessed. Yes. The which, 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 which book and which verse? I may not well remember for now, but I agree with you. So that is, that is true. It is true. It is true, but look, it is not that just a guarantee that you'll be given those years. Because once we are talking about the chastisement of God, God can take you home even with 40. Because he's the potter and we are the clay, right? So he can decide either way if, if you, if it, what was Solomon told? Solomon was told, if you obey me and uh, uh, keep my commandments and my statutes, I'm going to give you long life. So if people have been given long life because of obeying God, but we've been, if people who are just wicked, not saved, and also because God gives rain even unto the evil ones, they just there and they live. But at the end of the day, you know what worries most? Me? Even for such people is that when you die, where are you going? All right. So now, brother, I want to conclude by asking you. Do you still believe that you have to keep the commandments to go to heaven? Or to do the Bible, the, the teachings to go to heaven? 
I'm more of a believer. That you are more of a believer. Uh, from what you said, uh, that's yes. what you've taught. Yes. Um, faith, I'm a believing. Is what yes. takes one to heaven. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So now, the question is. The, the Askari, the policeman asked Paul and Silas, what must I to be saved and you stood, believe. And if you were to be honest and sincere in your heart, because people get saved after they have heard the gospel, the right gospel. If people who believe that they are saved outside here, yeah, but by the fact that they were passing over on a crusade, and they heard preachers saying, if you want to get saved, lift up your hand. And then they repeated that prayer without understanding the content of the gospel. They are the same people, you meet them out there and you ask them, are you 100% sure if you don't go to heaven, they tell you, I don't know, but I repeated that prayer. So that is, those are the people Paul calls false brethren. Because somehow they think they are saved, but they don't have any content concerning salvation. They, nobody gave them all the information so that they can subscribe to that faith. Now for you, in your place, you have the, you have the, you have the, the information. Everything has made, been made clear and straight unto you. Are you willing now to believe now in Jesus Christ and repent from trusting in the commandments? Let me think about it. Do you want do you want do you, do you want me to leave you think about it? Yeah, let me think about it. Okay. So before I leave you, think about it. I just want to show you what God would have expected you to do before we leave. Because at the end of the day, it will be like, hey, this is the chance. Because I don't know about tomorrow. People who are, who are dead now didn't know that they are going to die. And no one can even understand this gospel when he or she is in the ICU. It's only for a sober person. You and me. So let me just lastly show you what God was expecting you to do after you had this gospel, right? I'm going to use two scriptures, right? Please bear with me because maybe after showing you these two scriptures, you can, you can tell me, Pastor, why can I just tell, do it now? Now, if you look at Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, Paul proves the fact that people only believe after they have heard the truth. He says this, he says, um, he says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted, mark this, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So trusting comes after you heard the word of truth, isn't it? In whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the, that Holy Spirit of promise. So what happens? Immediately you hear the gospel and then you trust in Jesus Christ. <coughs> What happens next is you are sealed by the Spirit of God. That is to show that and prove that you are no longer going to hell. God has sealed you going to heaven no matter what, right? But then, before the sealing comes in, the Bible proves the fact that you have to call on the name of the Lord. I'm just showing you what you are supposed to do at the climax of this presentation. The Bible says what? The Bible says... In Romans 10, verses 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, there was a need for you to call on Jesus. Why are you calling on him? Because you believe he's the only Savior. And while you are calling, the Bible says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you needed to also confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he died and rose again. And the Bible says, for the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So, the thing that you are supposed to do now was after you had the gospel, it was now on your part. You know, I, Pastor Paul, cannot force you into this. The, the ball gets back into your court, and therefore, at the end of it now, after I've done my part, your part was, hey, I have heard the gospel. I want to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now for my salvation. And if you are willing to do that, it was going to be easy. You are not going to kneel down. You are not going to raise up your hands. You are not going to cry. You are just going to repeat a short prayer after me. But what saves you is the faith in your heart. Because God looks at the heart of a man and he can tell if this one has believed in my son or not. So, can you give me that card, please? So, if you are still insisting on thinking about it, I don't know what you are going to do after you've thought about it. Because 
the preacher was at your door to help you do it. Mm -hmm. Do you still insist you want to think about it? Yeah, definitely, yes. Okay, fine. Now, as you do uh, think about it, I want to leave you this card. This card is all about the details of our church. If you have ever used this route going to New Juna campus, Katkati Apa, there's a church with blue iron sheet kwa ukuta. You have ever seen this church, Ikotua Panyuma, right? It's known as Faithful Lord Christ Baptist Church. So this is the number of the pastor who is me. But also as you think about the gospel that I've given you, if you don't mind, if you scan this, it will take you to our YouTube channel and directly to this, the, the gospel that I've given unto you. So that as you think about it, you also listen again and again. And it will be my joy if you do at the end of it all what you are required to do. If you need to know anything more about our church, here is the website. And anything to do with Bible types, which Bible is good, how the Bibles are corrupted and what have you, you can scan this here. Thank you so sawa, much sawa. Sir, for your time. Asante sana. All right.